Greetings to all of humanity. It's really a joy. It's a pleasure. It's my honor, as usual, to be greeting you and always bringing this message of emancipation to you, whereby I'm pointing to look no other place but to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. That's the reason why I want to speak to you today concerning what Abdullah would have taught Neville Goddard many years ago. And that which Abdullah would have taught Neville was to believe in himself. Because that is what I want to speak to you about. It's about believing in yourself and why you need to believe in yourself. Not to believe in a power outside of yourself. Not to believe in a God outside of yourself. And not to believe in secular history or believe that the Bible is literal. But Abdullah taught Neville got it to believe that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically. Therefore, he taught him what Matthew 6.33 has been teaching us where it says that you must seek he first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Now the very first thing you have to know is that the kingdom of God is within you according to Luke seventeen twenty one, And also you must realize that you are the temple of God and that God do not dwell in temples made of hands. The next thing you must come to realize is that God is your imagination. So it isn't until you come to realize that God is your imagination that you will come to realize that you have to learn to love yourself and appreciate yourself so that you can believe in yourself. To believe in yourself would mean the concept you hold of yourself. Unfortunately, in the Caribbean I'm living here and the way that we were taught to believe through the school system being entangled with the religious system also, we've been taught to believe in a God outside of ourselves, and we've been taught a history of slavery. And all of these things put together with the virgin birth, Mary and Jesus story, will keep you in mental slavery. So we had to vibrate out of all of that before we can even come to believe in ourselves. So you find in this part a lot of people have a lot of inferiority complex and a lot of low self-esteem and so on. And it is because of their belief system. So Abdullah had to break Neville out of his belief system because Neville grew up in these parts also, grew up in the Caribbean and would have spent 17 years in the Caribbean because he born in the Caribbean and didn't leave the Caribbean island of Barbados until he was 17 years of age. And so when, Ab when Neville had this burning desire to travel to Barbados and he had no work or had any money, but was studying with Abdullah, the black mystic from Ethiopia, right? When he was studying with him for five years, Abdullah used his imagination on the behalf of Neville Goddard. And Abdullah could have done this because Abdullah knew that God is man's imagination and that imagination creates reality also. Abdullah knew that consciousness is the only reality there is. So his consciousness of being allows him to use this power and the behalf of another. And so never when he had doubts and fear and had to face all of the previous teachings that he would have gotten from his parents and his teachers and so on. He went to Abdullah more than one time on many occasions was saying to Abdullah that he's not seeing anything happening 
when Abdullah would have already assured him that he would have already gone to Barbados and that he would have gone first class. But through it all, Abdullah was teaching him to believe in himself. And that's the message I want to get across to each and every one. You have to learn to believe in yourself. You have to have the right perception and the right concept of yourself. That's the reason why even our ancestors would have written on the tombs, man know thyself. So one of the very first thing you have to seek in this world is to know yourself. We were taught to seek after money first. We were taught to go to school and get a good education and seek for a job. But I've come to realize, based on what Abdullah would have taught Neville Gallen, that we are to seek to know who we are first. So we must seek wisdom. Because according to the Bible in First Kings chapter 3, Solomon, who is said to be the wisest man, seek for wisdom, and he was given riches. And we know Solomon actually means son man. is a son in man. And when you discover that light within yourself, you would become wise, and you will come into a golden age, and you will be able to create your reality consciously because you understand Matthew 6, 33, perfectly because you discover the secret of creation and now you can create your reality consciously. So self-government is very important. It is very powerful. When we look in the Bible also, we see when the people leave Samuel and they call for a king and they were given Saul. That is teaching you that when you leave self-government, and you're calling on a government outside of yourself. You're believing in a power outside of yourself. And you're looking to others to govern your life for you. To think for you. That you are the one who's going away from Samuel. Who's your prophetic self. Your innermost self that would lead you and guide you. You're going away from your intuition. And you're following the system. But you're told not to be conformed to the system or to the world and the way of thinking, but you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that is why I just want to encourage you to believe in yourself. Do not try to give allegiance to another or look up to another by believing in things like aristocracy. The only aristocracy there is is the aristocracy of the spirit. And you are a spirit having a human experience. So my brother and my sisters, focus on your creative power that is in you, that you can use to achieve your every desire. For when the Bible speaks of God in man, it is speaking of man's imagination. For that is the immortal one in man. And that is God himself. For the eternal body of man is the imagination and that is God, and there is no other God. There's no God outside of yourself. There's no Savior or any Redeemer outside of yourself. So you're the one who have to redeem yourself. You have to the one who have to save yourself by putting action to that which you cannot see, but you believe deep within. So what you can see and you believe, you'll be able to manifest in this world and prove that the creator is in you and that the creator is man's imagination. For when you look around, you see everything in this world that was made, it was first imagined, it was first a thought, it was first an idea. And everything else that ever going to be, it must first be a thought, it must first be an idea, it must first be imagined. And in St. John 1 and 3, you're told that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made that him is not a man 2,000 years ago, my friends. That him is a personification of your imagination. So grab hold of your imagination. As Avila was teaching Neville Goddard to grab hold of his imagination, trust his imagination. He wasn't telling him to believe in a certain doctrine, a certain teaching. He wasn't telling Neville to believe in, 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 him, in him, Abdullah. He was telling Neville to believe in himself. He was pointing Neville to look inwardly 
That is why every true prophet would teach the people how to look inwardly to discover that their real identity is their divinity. Because when, when a man comes to understand his prophetic self, what he wants to do is to teach others how to discover their prophetic self also. And that is why you can prophesy your life into existence, into being. You call those things that be not as do they are. Because you realize that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of that thing that is not seen is your imagination that is not seen until you put action to that which you would have imagined and believe it and it come to pass. And it said in the word of God, which is the higher self, when I say God, I'm speaking of the higher self, it says that the world became flesh and dwell among us, and we handle him. It is you when your desires are already created and expressed. You now can handle that which was once a thought, that what was once spirit. It's been objectified now, and you can contact it by the five senses because it's in the form of matter. So you can touch it, you can see it, you can feel it, you can be in contact with it. So my brothers and my sisters, Everything that you're reading in the Bible, it's a great psychological jammer. It all have to do with the human mind, and it must be interpreted psychologically. It must not be interpreted as if it is literal or as if it is secular history. For that is what the clergy want us to believe, so that we would give our power away, and that we would look outwardly, but in uh, Luke 17, 21, you've been advised not to let anyone say to you, Lo here or lo there, because the kingdom of God is within you. So my brother my, and my sisters, there's no greater message or encouragement I can bring to you but to tell you to believe in yourself. That is why if you do not believe in yourself and you have self-doubt, that is the unpardonable sin, because sin is ignorance. Sin is not knowing who you are. For there's only one fundamental sin in this world, and it is not knowing who you are. Because we've been born in amnesia, and you have to wake up out of that amnesia to come to know who you are, so you can live as a master. So my brother and my sisters, let this word, let these words that I'm bringing to you encourage you and strengthen you to learn to believe more in yourself, because self-doubt is the devil. And self-doubt is the real blasphemy that no one can help you because you're speaking against your own self. For the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost is that creative power that is in you, that very life that is in you. For God is life and life is God. You can never separate God from life or life from God. So you, if you condemn yourself, there's no one who can help you. If you reject yourself, there's no one who can help you. Only you can help yourself. So, my brother and my sisters, use your imagination to get what you desire in this world. As Abdullah taught Neville Gala to use his imagination to go to Barbados when Neville had no work and had no money. So I'm saying to you, do not worry about where the money going to come from. Do not worry about how or when it would be done. Just order and wait. The Bible says that you must ask and it will be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. So my brother and my sister, I hope this word of encouragement means something to you and it really strengthens you and motivates you to believe more in yourself and to believe in your goals and your dreams and to encourage you that you need to write down your goals and your dreams also so you know when they have already been fulfilled in your life. So I want to say to you if this message really encouraged you and this is the first time that you've been listening to me and you'd like to get more of this kind of message, I would like to say if you haven't subscribed already, to subscribe, to like, to comment, or to share this video. But before I leave, I just want to remind you that this message I bring to you, that it is the single eye message of self-realization. of with Matthew 6.22 says that if your eye be single, your whole body be full of light. And it is because my whole body was filled with light. When the single eye opened within me, when I wake from the dream of life, 
why I'm here bringing this message to you. For it wasn't until I would have felt that great and mighty shaking and would have heard the unearthly wind and I sang like a fiery being and burst my crown chakra came out of my skull and became invisible that I come to understand the whole Bible is my spiritual autobiography that must be interpreted psychologically. That is why I always put my hand right above my crown chakra and give you the sign of the single eye saying to you that let no one ever brainwash or deceive you to make you believe that the eye above the pyramid and the US dollar that is an evil symbol. No, it is the all seeing eye of God in you who is your imagination. For when you have that awakened imagination, you come to realize that the eye represents the eye of the mystics, the eye of the prophets, the seers, those who will vibrate beyond humanity into their divinity and tell you their story of how the Bible is your spiritual autobiography. That's the reason why I always put my hand right above my crown chakra and say to you that when you have the experience, you come to realize that it is the rising of the S-U-N and the S-O-N and that it is the dawning of a new day in your life. For the sun as in the S-U-N parallels the human imagination and the human imagination parallels the sun. For without the sun, there is no life and there is no light. And without the human imagination, there isn't anything made that was made. And you're told in Psalms 84, 11, that the Lord thy God is a sun and a shield, and no good thing will he withhold from you. And truly, the sun has never withhold its energy from humanity, for the sun is what powers all of humanity. Then in Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, you're told also that the sun of righteousness shall arise in you with healing in his wings. And truly, the sun has risen in me, and I'm bringing healing to all of humanity. That is why my encouragement to you is to use your mind power, which is your God power, your solar power, your sun power, your creative power, which is actually the sexual power. Use that power to achieve your every desire. For that is what was taught to Neville Garland by Abdullah. So with that being said, I want to say peace, love you all, I'm out.